So I've been thinking lately about bugs. Not just any bugs, but bugs on your desktop. If you're on Windows and you encounter a bug, what do you do? You just sit there and wait for Microsoft's AI to fix it? There's a big one I see all the time on my work computer, which runs Windows, where a little hand grabber icon appears for when you like move your windows on your screen and stuff. But it's all pixelated because the resolution between my laptop and my monitor is different. Now, Windows as a professional enterprise desktop, I find that completely unacceptable and honestly embarrassing to the brand. But Microsoft doesn't care. I mean, what are you going to do? Use Linux? But that begs the question, if you do use Linux and you do run into a bug, what do you do? Now, I've been thinking about this topic for a few reasons, and one of them is the Windows bug I mentioned earlier. I see it all the time, and I'm thinking like, wow. Honestly, after not using Windows for probably five years and then running Windows 11 for the very first time, the visual quality or lack thereof is a, a, a little bit jolting. Linux desktops at this point are definitely more professional and polished, but only once they're tuned up a bit, and honestly, out of the box, they can feel a bit buggy. I kind of knew this going into it, but after doing an orbit around the Linux distro solar system and then landing back on Ubuntu, uh, well, it's actually a bit more pronounced than I thought. Now, I'm not going to pop off about this distro or that distro, but I will pop off about desktop bugs and config hygiene and what to do if things start to stink. Let's start on the instance I had on Arch, where SDDM just randomly stopped working. SDDM, by the way, is Simple Desktop Display Manager. It makes it so you can see a login and your desktop when you boot up. It's like a daemon that runs in the background that says, oh, the user's here, here's a desktop for you. So if it stops working, you get a black screen because what's like what's who's going to show you anything if if the door person isn't there to let you in, then the door's just closed. So it's kind of a big deal if it doesn't work and if you don't know what's going on. But let's say you run an update and uh, you reboot and you come back to a black screen. Who's responsible? I was on Arch, so presumably it was me, but I didn't change anything. One day it worked, and next day, poof, black screen on every other reboot. Not every time, it was every other reboot. But I really don't have an answer. Honestly, you probably don't either, because there is no salient answer. If I wanted to submit a bug for SDDM or a KDE project or Arch itself, I'd be shamed. I could probably dig around on Reddit and post something or maybe look in Discord, but the thing is, even if I do find a solution, that doesn't fix the bug, it solves the problem for just me, or you, or whoever's looking for it. And if you leave some path on the internet like a forum post, then cool, but that ages out and goes stale. So now let's zoom out and reframe a bit and say you're on an arch spin. And now SDDM breaks there, who's responsible? Often you might go to the forums and ask for help, but what if it was like a legit issue? I suppose then, after some troubleshooting, you or maybe somebody that was following or somebody that was helping would submit a bug, but like to who? Is it a packaging issue? Is it the maintainer? But I, I don't really know, and it's probably a package per package basis, but the triage process winds up being just kind of pointless and a waste of time. I mean, yeah, a person's problem is solved, but like how much time did that cost? And if it was a bug, which nobody even knows if it was, what if it was a config issue and nobody even knows how it got started, the problem never actually gets fixed. So look at it this way. Let's say you have a weird configuration issue that shipped on a distro that it gets fixed. And where is the knowledge stored? Is it in a forum post? Is it in a wiki? And then the wiki maintainer moves on and it, it goes out as, you know, how are we going to prevent it from happening again? And this loops right back around to my, probably my biggest complaint about Linux desktop. And it's more pertinent than ever because more people are using it than ever. And that is regressions. So you have a process that works like this. User A has a problem with some of the software. User B comes in and says, hey, I've got this script. You should run it, or maybe you should update this config file with this new line that I found. User B's suggestion fixes it for user A, and then user C comes in and updates the software to ship it like that, assuming that it fixed the problems for others, whatever. And now fast forward a few months or a few years, and an upstream makes a change that breaks that one workaround that worked for everybody else, and user D comes along and says, hey, something's broken. The end result is that nobody knows what's going on, they just think they do. 
it's like a kitchen with a bunch of cooks and they're all making kind of the same thing like you're over there doing your peppers your way and you're over there doing peppers you know like it's just it's weird but it winds up working because everybody is kind of working towards the same dish but it's obnoxious when i got into the community this process was sold as kind of like it's fun nerdy stuff but I'm here to tell newcomers, it's, it's not that fun, and it gets old fast. When you start seeing the same bugs pop up over and over again, it, the, it's not fun. What makes it feel fun at first is when you fix or solve the first problem, you feel like you're improving the process for everyone, but you're not. Instead, we've created a spider web with each node doing its own thing, making the entire ecosystem pff, maddening. And here I am going to go back to my Fedora snafu. In 2026, we should not be having weird upgrade issues with a mismatched architecture and file locks that, you know, crash the package manager. Like, that's just, those are problems that should have been solved like 10 years ago. We have such great tooling today. I just, I don't understand. But back to the original topic. What on earth do we do with these bugs? Honestly, it depends on the distro. Lots of distros have a central forum, a code repository like GitHub or Codeberg or, or Discord where people can get in there and, and post issues. But how issues get fixed is a totally different process. And this is where really the distro you choose matters. Let's say you find a cool little boutique distro and it's, it's got a developer or two and you rely on them to fix pretty much any bug you encounter. Even if it's a distro that uses literal upstream repos, it's up to them to ensure that the packages you're getting are the quality that you expect. And I don't think you expect buggy packages, do you? And that right there is where I think a lot of distros fall down and the users don't realize it. I'm not going to name names, but there are distros, both large and small, that often just point fingers back up at upstream for compatibility issues. like. The distro has problems with lib, maybe the libs are named weird, or there's architecture mismatches. And even though this piece of software works fine on every other distro, the maintainer says, oh, it's an upstream problem, you gotta talk to them about how they're packaging. It doesn't sound like something you'd run into that often, but you actually do if you use niche tools like Samba, or you wanna use something that uses port 53, which the user has to make very precise config file changes and I think most users would expect things when you install them to work out of the box. And if they don't, then there's like a big label or disclaimer saying, hey, by the way, you need to do some extra stuff. This is actually exactly why I added the network and printer tests to distro delves. And I'm sure a lot of you remember just how many desktop and noob friendly distros failed both of those tests. And I know it's probably tempting to run to their defense and say, come on, EG, maintaining a distro is hard. And I get it. I, I gave it a try last year and I, I tossed in the towel because I said it's both difficult and it's not fun. And I pivot on that a little bit and kind of have a cynical take. Maybe there's too many distros. I don't mean that in a bad way or a mean way, certainly. I don't want to question anybody's existence, but seriously, if it's a struggle to maintain a distro and you have people complaining that, you know, this package or like nobody's using it or whatever. I mean, there's nothing wrong with hanging it up. When I first started working on Hobby Linux, I even came up with some branding, you know, some slogans. I thought it was cool. And then I started working on it and I realized it wasn't very cool at all. <laughs> but even outside the technical aspect, when you ship software to any user, that user has at least some expectation that you're maintaining it or supporting it. And I mean, these little boutique distros have a rough time doing that. And in large part, that is why I have circled all the way back around to Ubuntu, one of the very first distros I used when I entered Linux. And the funny thing is the very first distro I ever used was Fedora. And that's the one that blew up and sent me over to Ubuntu. But I think Ubuntu was the second one. And I'm sticking with it. I've been thinking about like, what would I do if that SDDM bug happened today? And I, you know, I would probably just Google it. There's enough users on Ubuntu and derivatives that someone has likely had the same issue on this distro. The thing about Arch and other rolling release distros is they don't, they can't really offer the same level of support because if somebody has an issue with SDDM six months ago, I have no idea what what that even, nobody does. Like you could look at the you know the libraries and stuff, but 
When you have a static point release the way that Ubuntu does, you can say, okay, well, which Ubuntu version were you using? Okay, I know that it shipped with this and this and the config files are this. It makes triaging way easier. And what's more, Ubuntu, or Canonical, I guess, actually has their own little kind of, it's kind of like GitHub, but it's its own system. It's called Launchpad. And it even has a bug section where you can search for bugs. And hey, look at that. There's a user report for black screen. So I'd click it and you have, it affects me too. And it would raise it up in their triaging system. You could go down and leave a comment. If you've worked with or adjacent to enterprise software, this will feel really sane and familiar to you. Being able to easily submit bugs, find bugs, and also say that, hey, this bug also affects me. I mean, that's a must have for triage. And given how distributed Ubuntu is, it's really cool to find a bug that was submitted like two days ago and see 10 comments on it just from people using it saying, hey, it did this or hey, it did that or something like that. It feels more personal than a forum. And, you know, Discord and other chat setups, they have a lot of drive-bys, just people that kind of pop in and they try it, it blows up and they say, hey, I had this problem. And next thing you know, they're onto something else. It's harder to do that with a like a bug filing system, but then you don't want to make it too hard and nobody submits it. Canonical somehow found a balance between the two. But so anyways, what do we do with all of these bugs on our desktop? Well, I'm just going to get away from them by going to a distro that handles them in the way that isn't, hey, this is Upstream's problem or figure it out yourself. Ubuntu is good for me. Debian is another really solid, stable base. What about you though? Do you prefer rolling releases or point releases, LTS stuff? I'm kind of curious about what everybody uses. Now I'm going to do my best to stick with a single distro. Hold me to it. If you find me slipping, you should be like, EG, what happened? If you like this one, feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. I appreciate all your support. And thanks for watching.